Christ in you. Oh, Christ in you. We want to bless God for the gift of life and the opportunity to join you this morning. How many of us were here last week? How many of us were here last week? Oh, lift it well, I want to see. Okay, how many were not here last week? Wow. Okay. So, I hope that you'll be able to get the recording of what I said last week and have some time to engage with it uh, in order to uh, get the full meal because I'm continuing from where I left off last week. Amen. God bless the choir for that wonderful ministration. Indeed, Christ our Lord is coming and is coming soon. This soon has been for some time and because of that, many people think that you know, these are lies. You know, but I think that the patience of God, the love of God towards his creation is beyond human comprehension. Um, he's being extra patient with the vessels of mercy so that um, by all means, every opportunity will be given to everybody. You know, um, I believe with all my heart that the day that the trumpet will sound, those who don't make it, it will not be God's fault. Are we together? God would have done more than he should have done. All right. The day we stand before the Lord to be judged, I believe that there's no one who will stand in the courts of heaven and go and argue. Go and tell God, no, this one I don't agree. I think you are being harsh. No. I think that when your judgment is given, you will still salute him and say, thank you, you have been merciful. Are we together? God is so kind, so patient with his creation. But let's not um, take, you know, how long it is taking to mean that it is not true. That is where some people are at. If you are, if you are in that place of doubt, that this has been more than 2,000 years, if he would come, he would have come. I want you to change your mind and rather see it from the perspective of his love and his mercy, that many will come to the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Last week, I said that there are many views about eschatology, and all our views about the end times are like pointers into a fog. I was quoting the New Testament scholar N.T. Wright, who said that, Many of the things that people project about the future may not be as, as we say them. Because we are all giving our best guesses based on scripture on what it might look like. But the best person to help us, the best person whose testimony we cannot do without, is the one who steps forward from the fog to come and tell us what is behind the fog, right? So the one who steps from the future to the now, to tell us what is in the future, you cannot overlook what he says. And that person is Jesus Christ. And that is why when it comes to eschatology, I want my eschatology to be Christocentric. I want it to be focused on what Christ has said first, and then I will use uh, Pauline and Johannine scriptures to support what Jesus is saying. Are we on the same page? So open with me to John chapter 14, verse 3. Today I'm treating the subject of the rapture, who will be raptured, and then rewards. Rewards. John chapter 14, verse 3. I believe that someone can quote it off head for us, right? John's gospel, chapter 14, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Very interesting scripture. And you see, if you accept Jesus as the son of God, or you accept Jesus for who he says he is, then you cannot downplay any of his statements. 
I tell my Muslim brothers and sisters that if someone says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, there. Or if someone equates himself with God, if you disagree with him, then call him a bad man. Call him a liar. Call him an imposter. Don't call him a prophet. You cannot say that someone is wrong in his claims about himself and still treat him as a special person. No. Then there is something wrong with your analysis of him. It's either we accept him for what he is saying or we brand him as an imposter, a liar. You cannot say that he's lying about what he has said concerning himself and yet he's a good prophet, he's an important person who has to be respected. in These are the words of Jesus. He says that I am going and I'm going to prepare a place. After I have prepared the place, I will come back and I will take you to be with me so that you will be where I am. How many of us believe this? These are the words of Jesus. How many of us believe it? Tell the one sitting by you, truly Jesus is coming. Now when it comes to the idea of the rapture, I want us to read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 16 and 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Here again, there are many schools of thought. There are people who do not believe that there is going to be anything called the rapture. There are people who think that you know, all of us will go through hard times and when God is ready, he will just come judge and then we continue ruling here on earth. There are people too who think that at the end the Lord will come take those he will take destroy the rest and take them to wherever he will take them to. But we believe that to be able to give space for the great tribulation and to be able to also give space for the millennial rule the coming of Christ and the millennial rule there ought to be a catching up of the saints from the earth for a period and they are retained, you know, to make all the things that the Bible has said true and coherent. And so let's read what Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Now it is that, that uh, word caught up, which in the Latin is rapere, and that is where we get the idea of the rapture. Okay, the Greeks call it hapazo. Now, the idea of hapazo is to catch out or to snatch out some, not all, snatch out a select number from a bigger chunk. And that is the idea that Apostle Paul was espousing here. That those of us who are alive and who believe, there is a day coming that we will be transformed. But our transformation will be after those who have died have risen up. Those who have died will rise up as people who have never been corrupted. And when those who have died rise up, those who will be alive at that time will also be transformed. And then together, the two groups will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So that is what we describe as the rapture. There will be many other people who will be living on the earth, but a few will be taken away. Jesus Christ himself gave a lot of allusions to this. Come with me to Mark chapter 13, verse 26. Mark chapter 13, verse 26. Are we together, please? At that time, People will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power 
and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Right? So here, Jesus himself is, is giving a picture of how it will be. That the Son of Man will come with the clouds of heaven. And when that happens, he will send his angels to gather the elect. The elect. He is coming for his elect. How many of us feel we are part of the elect? Now, to be elect doesn't mean that uh, before we were born, some people's names you know, were given to the chief examiner. All right. That um, these are the people you should admit. A door has been opened for everybody. Come accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get your names written in the book of life. Once you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior and you continue to live a life consistent with that faith, you are part of the elect. Amen? There are many theories about predestination. I don't want to go into it. But there is nobody who comes to the Lord who accept Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, who the Lord will throw away. There's no one who comes to him whom he will cast out. So being part of this group depends on your response to the gospel message. Are we together? Right. And so Jesus will gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. Wherever you will be hiding on that day, and those who have died, it doesn't matter where they died, they will be gathered by the powers of heaven. Hallelujah. Let's look at how Luke also writes it. In Luke chapter 21. Today there are all kinds of teachings. You have to read the word for yourself and know what Jesus has said. Now in Luke chapter 21, look at how Apostle, um, I mean, uh, Luke writes it. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing nigh. Now come with me again to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Luke 12, 35. Jesus' words. Be dressed, ready for service. And keep your lamps burning like servants waiting on their master to return from a wedding banquet. So that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve. Will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or towards the daybreak. So here, you see, he's giving a picture of servants waiting upon their master. And he says that blessed is that servant who is dressed ready to serve. Be ready. When the trumpet sounds, may we be found ready. I said, may we be found ready. Amen. There's a funny story of an Ujasio's brother who, you know, was well known in town as very powerful. And one day he was messing up somewhere with a lady in a room somewhere. And according to this story, the house where they were was close to the, the highway, you know, and there was an articulated track that was passing at top speed and a goat crossed the truck. And so the driver just honked. And this guy got up. Jesus, forgive me. The trumpet has sounded. <laughs> All right. When he heard the, the, the horn of the articulator, he thought that it was the trumpet that was sounding, which means that this guy, even whilst he was there, he knew that something would happen. You know, be found ready. Tell the one sitting by you that be found ready when he comes. The interesting thing is that when he comes, instead of we serving him, he will let us recline so that he rather takes over and serves us. So you see, the whole thing is that 
Serve him now. Do all that you will do for him now. Because a day is coming that the Lord will be delighted to also serve us and make us comfortable. He's taking us to the place where he's preparing, where we would have comfort upon comfort. In this world, as Christians, we would not have all the things that we are looking for. Please, you would not have all the things that you are looking for in this world. But here when you are Krobi, we have a place of glory. When we get there, all your aspirations would be met. Everything that you have dreamt of, you would have it. Because the Lord himself will serve you with it. Now, when is this rapture happening? When is it happening? When is it happening? The Bible has said that when people are saying peace and safety, that is when sudden destruction will come upon them. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1 to 3. First Thessalonians 5, 1 to 3. Now, brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. When COVID-19 hit and Accra was locked down, at the time I was in Los Angeles, we were also locked down, and I looked at this busy city turned into a graveyard, and I was like, wow. So drastic. Now, in times like that, when you talk about end times, it's easy for people to believe, right? But the Bible says that the day the trumpet will sound, people will be saying peace and safety. It will come like a thief in the night, all right? When we least expect, so please, things will not get as worse as you are looking for before you get the assurance that, mm, baby, you do it there. The Lord is coming. I hope you understand. The Lord will come on a regular day, just as thieves visit on regular days. It is only, you know, uh, importunate thieves who would give you a notice before they visit. A thief who gives you a notice before they visit, that person must be very wicked. But normally thieves visit without notice. And that is how the coming of the Lord is going to be like. Suddenly, in a twinkle of an eye. Which means it can be now that I'm speaking. It can be this evening when you are home. It can be this week whilst you are going about your normal duties. When it happens right now, where would we be? Where would we be? So it's going to happen suddenly. Take note of that. Now, let's come also to Matthew 24, 36. The words of Jesus. Matthew 24, 36. But about the day or the hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So you see, when Jesus was saying this, he was here with us, and he had put himself amongst men. And so he says that, I don't know. Right. But as God, he knows. And this is a secret in heaven. A secret that angels don't even know. So as the angels are going about their normal duties, they don't know. They are also, but they can see the preparations. You know, when <laughs> uh, there's going to be a banquet or there's going to be a, par a, 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 a party somewhere. You may not know when it may start, but those who are preparing, when everything is getting ready, they may know. I'm sure that the angels are even more eager than us. Probably they have seen all the things that have been put in place. And they look at the way we are jumping around and doing our things as if there is nothing at stake. And they wonder, are these the people we are preparing all this for? We are even more prepared than them. Those who are going to serve us are more prepared than those who are going to enjoy the blessing. So even the angels in heaven do not know it's going to happen Suddenly. Somebody says suddenly. And it will be a surprise. You see, the reason why I attach so much importance to the teaching of eschatology, and I want to preach it in season and out of season, is that 
Sometimes when you write WASI or you write your examination on campus and you, you don't pass, you have opportunity to reset, right? And the reset can be as good as the main exam. In fact, sometimes even the reset may be cheaper than the main exam, you know. And that's why people reset and pass. And the reset also gives you time to correct your faults and then you are ready to take it. But this one, this particular test, if the trumpet sounds and in that moment you are not ready, the reset is much more difficult with much less rewards. Much more difficult to go through with much less rewards. In other words, those who are not raptured, who go through the great tribulation, you go through a painful tribulation period, be destroyed, be killed, be maimed, and go through all those things and yet miss the marriage supper of the Lamb. You would never see heaven, probably. You may join them, you know, during the millennium to rule here on earth for a thousand years, after which, as I explained last week, when the new heaven and the new earth is created, you will have access to the new earth, even if you pass the test of the tribulation. I've heard people say that, look, let's enjoy. When the trumpet sounds and now we know the thing is true, now you're the end quan etraso. After all, people commit suicide. You see how human beings think, but you have no idea what it is. And so please, tell somebody for me that pass once and for all. Pass once and for all. That is when you will get the full reward. Or else you will go through pain and still not join the marriage supper of the Lamb. May the Lord have mercy on us. So I have said that the timing is unknown. But it will happen. Tell somebody it will happen. We Pentecostals believe that it is imminent. It is coming soon. We believe in Jesus' words when he said, Behold, I am coming soon. And if we think that 2,000 years is too long, it is just a picture of how um, eternity would be. Eternity is too long. So compared to eternity, 2,000 years is like the Lord having a little patience so that he will get many people into a glorious eternity. Hallelujah. There are many signs of the end times which, of course, all of us here can list. And I don't want to bore you about it. Everything around us shows that we are very close to the last days. All the things that Jesus talked about and all the things the early apostles talked about, they are happening. They are converging. There is convergence. All the things are happening at the same time. You see, some time ago, you, you have one or two of them happening, and then it will stop, and an, another one or two will be happening. But now, all the things are happening at the same time, telling us that it is very, very close. It is very close. Now, the faith of those who have died in Christ. If you die in the Lord, blessed are you. The Bible says that blessed are those who die in the Lord. For the Spirit says they will rest from their labors and their works follow them. Those who have died in the Lord, they are the best group of people. Those who died in the Lord. You know, they, they are, I mean, they, they are the most blessed group. The reason why I'm saying that is that those who have died in the Lord, their docket is closed. All right, and they are waiting for that day. And on that day when the trumpet sounds, they would rise up first. And they would take the lead, and then those of us alive will follow them. So if it was an airplane that we were going to board, those who, who resurrect and are ready first, if they give them access, enter the plane first, where do you think they will go and occupy? Sure. They... And Paul said that we would by no means overtake them. We would by no means overtake them. I want to encourage you, if you are here and you have lost a loved one who was a Christian, think about yourself. Those who died in the Lord, they are blessed. 
Because on that day, they will take the lead and we will follow them. They will occupy the first class and the business class. And then those of us alive will take the economy and then we will go. Uh -huh. Right? So they are blessed. How many want to die? <laughs> I, I'm making death look so advantageous. Eh? Yes, and that is how Christians must live. We must not fear death. Because of the promises of Christ, we must go past the fear of death. And that is why nothing must make you leave the feet of Jesus. To preserve this life, it will end by all means. Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. As a Christian, you must not be afraid of death. Because Paul says that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. He was talking about his first class seat. It's gain. To die is gain. Tell the one by you, don't fear death as a Christian. Right. Now, I want us to look at the subject of who will be raptured. So right now, all that we are waiting for is for the trumpet. That is the only mystery that God has hidden even from the angels in heaven. The rest of the things, they are all timed. The millennium, we know that it is 1,000 years. Are we together? The tribulation, we know it is seven years. What else? Eternity, we know it's eternity. <laughs> right? The only thing that he has hidden from us is the moment that the trumpet will sound. As soon as we get to know that moment, all the rest of the issues can flow. I mean, we, would, we will be able to predict when this is happening, when that is happening. But right now, it is the timing of the rapture, which is a mystery. Jesus has described in detail those who should expect the rapture. Those who should expect the rapture. And I want to encourage you, my dear friends, as we talk about the coming of the Lord, let us take these words as warnings from the Lord and let them help us to rise up and work on our own um, salvation with fear and trembling. Come with me to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25, verse 1. Let me give you the structure of Matthew 25. In Matthew 25, Jesus was treating three key themes. The first theme is kingdom living. Those who will be raptured, how they live in the kingdom. How you are supposed to conduct yourself in the kingdom. The second part is Kingdom business. The first part is from verse 1 to um, 13. And then from the verse um, 14 right down to verse 30, he was talking about kingdom business. Those of us who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, what kind of business and with what attitude we must live. And then the final part from 31 to 46 he was talking about kingdom rewards, kingdom business, I mean kingdom living, kingdom business, and kingdom rewards. Now, that structure itself is very important. The first thing you must focus on is how you live, how you live. Before you think of what you would do for the kingdom, be concerned with how you live. Before I think of the work I do for God, I must think of how I live. Kingdom living is more important to God than kingdom business. Praise the Lord. And when you have done business for the Lord, that is when you can expect a reward. Don't expect a reward when you have not lived for him and when you have not labored for him. Are we together? And when we talk about living for him and laboring for him, we know what it is in our contemporary times. It is not just just about you know, coming to church. Some people think when we come to church, they mark us in heaven. You know, so they will go to heaven and go, oh, I attended, I attended, I, I attended every Sunday. No. Kingdom business. Living and kingdom business. So let's look at kingdom living. Jesus used the story of 
the ten virgins to describe those who will be raptured. He used the story of the ten virgins. Everybody who has been saved by grace, you have become a spiritual virgin. It doesn't matter your mileage. Hello? Are we together in church this morning? I said it doesn't matter your mileage. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. You have become a spiritual virgin. But this story makes us understand that not all spiritual virgins will be ready to meet the Lord when he comes. This is where it gets tricky. It's not everybody who comes to church. It's not everybody who is speaking in tongues. It's not everybody who walks around church and works around church who will be ready to meet the master. So he explains very well. That at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took the alarms and went out to meet the bridegroom. At what time? In these last days when we are waiting for the Lord, he says that it will be like all of us who have taken our alarms ready for the bridegroom. We are waiting for him. We are singing Maranatha. Jesus, come. But he says that five of them were foolish and the other five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. They took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, the reason why they are calling them wise is because they prepared for a long abiding relationship with the master. They knew that the master may keep long. In fact, when you read the verse 5. He says that the bridegroom was a long time in coming. Into Yesu or Beche. It will be long. Even now that we are singing, uh, and Christ our Lord comes once again and all that. It can be that we will grow old, gray, die, and go, and he wouldn't have come. It can be. It can be that our children would also grow gray and die and go. The master will keep long in coming. And that is why you have to prepare for a long distance journey with him. You see, those who think that, oh, the Lord is coming. I remember the year 2000. My goodness. People thought he was coming. People stopped sinning. People broke up with their girlfriends and boyfriends. People People prepared. Cleared certain things from the way. And then 31st night. Churches were full to capacity. You know, millennium back. Indomit generation, are you around? <laughs> millennium back. And all that. And when nothing happened, January, February, March, people started advising themselves. Are we together? Prepare for a long distance walk with the Lord. That is wisdom. That is what the wise virgins did. They took extra oil with them. But the others just picked their lamp, probably because it was burning. They just picked it and thought, oh, oh, ban and say, yeah. But he will keep long in coming. My dear friends, listen. I have been saying this, that the human being living on this earth is like a traveler traveling on a desert. No matter how well nourished you are today, very soon you will be thirsty. Very soon you will be hungry. That is the reality of our humanity. It is a humbling um, realization and admittance. We have to admit that as human beings, it doesn't matter how you are on fire for the Lord today. It's only a matter of time. You would need another revival. You will need another refilling. So that is our life. That's how it is. And that is why if you don't prepare to walk with the Lord for a long time, you will not see it up. We are energy consuming beings. As we go, we consume energy. Just like the lamp uses energy to burn. So if you don't prepare and have extra, very soon you will be out of business. Even if, I mean, I'm not talking about people who are actively sinning. Even if you are not sinning, if you stop engaging in the spiritual disciplines, naturally you will grow cold. Naturally you will grow cold. And that is why you have to prepare. Tell somebody, prepare for this journey. 
Oh, tell another person, prepare well for this journey. Take responsibility for your lamp. Tell him or her for me. So the reason why the others were being called foolish is that they did not understand the master. They did not understand his timing. And they did not understand their own reality as human beings. Hmm. You have to have stay in power. Say stay in power. Hmm. If you have been saved, you have to keep on standing to the end. There are people who are teaching one saved, forever saved. It is not true. One saved, saved forever is not a sound doctrine. Uh, don't hold on to that. So these foolish virgins, they did, they did things that consumed their energy. Okay? They lived, you know, irresponsibly and thought that things would work out themselves. If you take it on a spiritual dimension, you can also see that they lived carnal lives. They did not prepare for a spiritual journey. They did not work on their lamp. They did not work on their light. May the Lord help us. Ladies and gentlemen, holiness is our reasonable act of worship. Seeing that great rewards await the faithful. Holiness is our reasonable act of worship. For us to be able to keep our fire burning, we must be removing ashes, we must be fanning into flames, we must be engaging in spiritual disciplines that cause us to grow. Buy new books. Buy new tapes. Attend new conferences. Watch new videos that are Christocentric. Hallelujah. Make sure that you are having seasons of fasting and prayer yourself. These are the things that will keep your fire burning. If you want to be a wise virgin, these are the things. Make sure that you are taking responsibility for growing your own fire. That is what the wise people did. And when the master came, they were ready to go with him. Interestingly, the Bible says that when the trumpet sound, I mean, when the master came, they heard that the bridegroom is coming. They quickly became aware of their condition. And they were asking their friends, can you give us a little oil? And the friend said, no, go to town. Go and buy some. Uh -huh. You see, there are moments that this kind of wickedness is holy. Are we together? Yeah. Huh. See, your virtue will be marked by your wisdom, not by your kindness. <laughs> See, some of us, the reason why we are not making it is because we are too kind, unwisely kind. We are giving things which we shouldn't give out, out. And think that, me, yeah, papa. Any kindness that is not wise, that kindness is foolish. And these people were wise because even with their resources, they knew when to give and when not to give. That is wisdom. The other thing is that the foolish ones did not ask them, oh, we don't have money, can you give us money? No, they just went, which means they had the money. They had what it takes to buy the oil, but they did not buy you have the resources. You have time. You have energy. You can fast and pray. You can read God's word. You can develop a rhythm of spirituality. That makes you come up when you are going down. But no, we will not. If that happens, that day the trumpet will sound. You will be in church, all right. But you will be told that, no, I don't know you. May the Lord help us. These are serious issues. Very serious issues. We are talking about the church. And if five were wise and five were foolish, that statistics itself is frightening. Are we together? As we are in church, if we are to divide ourselves into two groups, who do you put at the left and who do you put at the right? Everybody thinks I should be at the right. But if 50% were in the left, then it is not a joking matter. It can be you as much as it may not be you. May the Lord have mercy upon all of us. Hallelujah. So that is the rapture. Those who are going to be raptured 
are those who prove to be wise virgins. Are those who prove to be wise virgins. People who are using all their resourcefulness for spiritual favor. You have money, buy books and read. You have money, you have time, make time for the Lord. Instead of spending your credit on unnecessary things, your data on unnecessary things, why don't you go to YouTube and watch some Christocentric videos that will help you build your fire? That is what wise virgins do. Are we together? Yeah. Don't use your money, you know, for a party. And then when the pencil conference comes, you say, I don't have money. I need a sponsor. You are not being a wise virgin. Am I talking to somebody? So use your resources in ways that will fan the fire. That will fan the fire. Another thing that helps us to know those who will be raptured is in Revelation chapter 3. And I'll touch that briefly. Revelation chapter 3. The message to the Philadelphian church. Now those of you who have read Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, you see that Jesus was addressing the seven churches in Asia Minor, from Ephesus to Laodicea. Now, apart from the church of Smyrna, which was encouraged to be faithful until death, that church, the Lord did not have anything negative to say about them. But if you look at the rest of the churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, and all the others, the Ephesus, Pergamos, Tatira, and all the others, they had things against them. But one church called the Church of Philadelphia. This church, the Lord said wonderful things about them, which I want to read. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 down. If you are with me, give me a wave. Because of the nose mask, it's very difficult to know, I mean, watching people's faces, whether they are following or not. Uh, but the Lord knows behind the nose mask. Let's see by hands those who are following this morning. All right. So Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, let's look at what the Bible says. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them to come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. 10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. To the one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God. And the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I'll also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Interesting. Now, let me pick a few things. Now, the Philadelphian church is among other churches. Laodicea is there. They talked about the fact that they are uh, neither hot or cold and all that. All the other churches had their butts. But this church, the Lord says that I know your deeds. And I like the prophecy that came this morning when God was telling us that he knows us and the things that happen in our secret place. He knows all of us. When we come to stand before the Lord, we have nothing to hide. There's nothing we can hide from the Lord. He knows everything inside out of us. He says that I know your deeds. 
So the one who knows you, if he says that you have kept my word, then you have done well. Are we together? Then you have done well. The church in Philadelphia did very, very well. This is a church that is going through difficult times. That is going through hard times just to please the master. A church that is trying to stay in the words of the Lord. He says that, look, you have a little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Can I tell you something? In this generation, if you want to live like a Christian, if you want to be a Christian at your workplace, if you want to be a Christian in your vicinity, if you want to be a Christian in your family, if you want to be a Christian in your school, if you want to be a Christian in church, if you want to be a proper Christian, live by God's word, stop sinning, live a holy life, do what is right everywhere, you will soon find out that you have a little strength. You will soon find out that there are many things others do you cannot do. You will soon find out that your chances and opportunities in life are few. If you are going for a job, you know, interview, you know, others can get there by their vital statistics. But you cannot because you want to stay in God's word. So there are many jobs that you will lose because of God's word. Am I talking to somebody? If you're a businessman, there are many contracts that you will lose because of God's word. If you are a married man or a married woman, there are many things. Slaps you should have given somebody, you will hold your hand back. You will see that you have a little strength. Those who really live a godly life will soon discover that you have a little strength. Your options are few. But he says that, yet you have not denied my name, but kept my word. Those who will be able to keep God's word and not deny him, the Lord is taking note of all this. And because of that, he says that I would keep you from the hour of temptation. That is coming upon the whole earth. In the history of the world, apart from Noah's flood, which was a moment of temptation that affected the whole world, there has not been any other cosmic, you know, um, cataclysmic um, event that has affected the whole world at the same time. Are we together? Sodom and Gomorrah was geographically limited. What else? All the other major things that have happened. Maybe COVID-19 is gl global, right? Yes, but this is clearly not the hour of temptation he's talking about. Because COVID has killed Christians also. Now, what Jesus was saying here is that there's an hour of temptation coming. He was talking about the period of the Antichrist. A period where things will be so difficult. For those who want to serve the Lord. And he says that, yes, for the church in Laodicea, fine, let them go through. For the other churches, let them go through the hour of temptation. But those who are in the spiritual Philadelphian church, they have already paid their dues. They have suffered enough for my name. They have kept my word. They have not denied my name. They have, they have given themselves only a few options, and yet they have loved me. Because of that, those people... I will take them out. So I think that the rapture is going to take out those who belong to this spiritual Philadelphian church. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah. The whole church is there. But the rapture is going to select those who have kept his word. Who have not denied his name. People who have kept their garments pure. People who have not blessed themselves with the opportunities the world gives. But who have stayed faithful to the Lord and lost many things. He is going to reward them by taking them out of the rapture. Am I talking to somebody? So by your own life, you know whether you are rapture worthy or not. The other thing that I want to pick from there is that he says that I will let those who claim to be Jews but are not, but are liars, I'll let them come and bow at your feet. You know God does not, I mean share worship with his creation, all right? Even the angels in heaven, they are not supposed to take worship. But here, he says that I will share with you. I will let those who claim to be Christians but are fake, I will let them come and bow at your feet. What was he talking about? The millennial rule. Because in the millennium, we will sit and judge the nations of the world. And there will be people 
who will be around? People who faked us that they were Christians but are liars. Huh. And then the final thing I want to pick there is that he says that hold what you have fast so that nobody takes your crown. Those who belong to the spiritual Philadelphian church, your crown is already ready. It's not like they are now making your crown. Your crown is there. All you are doing is defending your crown. Tell somebody, defend your crown properly. Hallelujah. And so, without a shadow of doubt, we know that it's not everybody in church who should expect the rapture. Now, those who are raptured, what will be their fate? Those who are raptured, they are going to face what we call the Bema Seat Judgment. The Bema Seat Judgment. That is going to be the first part of the rewards. The fact that you are raptured too doesn't mean that is the end. Uh -huh. Those who are raptured, we are going to be judged. Uh -huh. But what the Lord is doing is that, you see, like what every good bridegroom does. No bridegroom, you know, judges or insults the wife in public, right? A good husband will take the wife into the chamber and then talk to the wife. That is what Jesus is going to do. So he's not going to judge the saints with the unbelievers. He's not going to judge us in public. That is why he will rapture us into glory and then take us to his chamber. The Bema Seed judgment is the judgment of believers, judgment of saints. But even among saints, some are more saintly than others. Are we together? So the Bema Seed is to give recognition for excellent living. We are going to be graduated if we are 100. He will grade us. When they did first, when they did second, when they did, they will grade us because there are seats waiting. And all those seats, you see, when we talk about, uh, um, about Bema, um, Be uh, Bema is that thing that the athletes stand on. The first, second, and third. Uh -huh. You see that the one who is first stands higher. And then the second, and then the third. That is what we call the Bema uh, throne. So he's going to graduate us. We'll not be the same. And all our human titles. This one is apostle. This one is pastor. This one is in Beko Penny. This one is soft mommy. This one is choir director. All those titles will be obsolete. Say obsolete. It will be obsolete. My apostleship ends when I close my eyes. When I open my eyes, the new category will be good and faithful or bad servant. May the Lord have mercy upon us. So we are going to be graduated again. And based upon your score, you will be shown your seat. He will rearrange us. When we come to church, we have booked the seat. This, this is apostle's seat. This is pastor's seat. This is, all right. When we get to heaven, the whole order will change. The Lord will give the seats to those who are worthy. And I think that the Pentecost system was taken from heaven. Uh, the closer you are to the master, it means the higher your debility. Eh? Yes. May the Lord help us. So please, at the Bema seat, that is what Jesus was talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Are we together? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. He says that, for we must all appear before the judgment, judgment seat of Christ, so that each one of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. What it means is that those of us who are Christians who do bad things, huh, they will all matter on that day. He wasn't talking to unbelievers. This is Christians. So that the things we have done in our body, we are going to receive rewards for them before the throne. And I think it's going to be a very humbling experience. Very humbling because, you see, <laughs> the, 
the reason why it's going to be a righteous judgment is that everything will be in the open. The Bible says that where the secrets of every heart shall be. So that is the day of secrets also. So, for example, if they call one person and then you come and stand there, what we don't know is that as we are walking around, we, we think we are so smart. But we don't know that the master, the creator, inserted a memory chip in us when he created us. That one he didn't tell you. There's a chip inside you called the conscience. It's God's own formatted memory chip. It's recording everything. You see, so God doesn't need to give you a supervisor. You are your own supervisor. You are recording yourself. You don't know. Ah, so you have all your data inside you. The day you, they mention your name, then God's computer through, I don't know whether it will be Bluetooth or white tooth or Wi-Fi direct or whatever. As soon as they call you, the file will upload and the screens will pick it. See, so that you don't come and say that they have not been fair to you. Everything, the Bible says that the secret of everybody's heart shall be revealed. And it will be such a humbling thing. All of us seated, we, we watch yours. And then after that, you watch mine. And after that, we watch yours. Do you see that all of us will come down? Yeah, all of us will come down. Very humbly. So next time you meet somebody who the Lord said scored 98%, you know why the person scored 98%. And you too, you know why you scored your 72. Am I talking to somebody? That is the Bema seat. Please, that also even tells us that Qualifying for heaven is not it all. We must make sure that our works, because our works will follow us. We must make sure that our works on that day will not be like gravels in the mouth of those who watch our works. And after your life has been exposed to the world, I mean to fellow saints whom you are going to live forever with, how will you live with them? Hello? But it will be such a healing process. And then we'll be reordered. So that is the Bema seat. I want you to take note of that. That is also going to be another kind of uncomfortable you know, process. Uncomfortable yet necessary. It's like you go and sit before a doctor. You wish the doctor would tell you you are, you are fine. The doctor tells you, oh, you, you you have cancer, you have this, you have this. Revealing what is there. He didn't put it there. He's revealing what is there. The Lord would unveil what is in us and based upon our works they would give us rewards. May the Lord help us. Now those who are not raptured and those who are not saved, they will also go for their judgment. But their judgment is what we call the white throne judgment. At the Bema seat everybody will pass except that you will be told why you are behind this person. No. Uh -huh, but everybody will pass. But at the white throne judgment, nobody will pass. That one too, everybody will fail. But we have bad and we have bad. I hope you understand. Uh -huh. So there too, they are going to graduate. I don't think that the lake of fire will have an even temperature. No. I don't think so. Uh -huh. If the Bema seat would give us rewards according to what we have done, then I think that the lake of fire would also give rewards of fire according to what people have done. And so there too, their judgment would also be different. Everybody is going to the lake of fire, but they are going to determine the gravity of sins that they have committed. You don't have a portion there. And so let us concentrate on how we may appear before the judgment seat of Christ. May the Lord have mercy upon us. So that is the first reward. And the things that will matter before the judgment seat are your nature and your works. Who you are and what you did. Who you are and the works that you did for the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is when all the soul winning, you will receive a reward for that. That is when all the mercy you show to other people, you will receive a reward for that. Yebre and Yekwa. All the things that we are suffering for Christ, 
will receive rewards for them. Hallelujah. Now the next chunk of rewards that we should be expecting is at the millennium. It's at the millennium. I have already explained last week that those who go for the Bema seat judgment, they are the ones who would enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb for a period of seven years, a period of merrymaking and enjoyment. Now, after that seven years, they will come with the Lord. And Jude saw this when he wrote that, I saw the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints. That is the second coming. So the second coming of the Lord is after the uh, marriage supper of the Lamb. When we come with the Lord, there is going to be a battle called the Battle of Armageddon, where the devil will be arrested and thrown, thrown into the abyss for a thousand years. And as soon as he is off, there will be peace in the realm. And that is when Jesus would establish his throne in this earthly Jerusalem, not the new one, the earthly Jerusalem. And then the 12 tribes of Israel, he has already given appointments as to who would be the governors of those 12 tribes. The rest of the world, including Africa, the Americas, and all that, then he's going to distribute it to us, those of us who were in heaven with him. And guess what? At that time, if you scored a higher mark in heaven during the Bema seat, you will be entrusted with more geographical location. I hope you understand. That is how it works. So some will work under others. Those of us who are Christians, some of us will work under others. It's just like the Pentecost system, where some are apostles, some are pastors, some are presiding elders, some are, hmm, depending on the level of trust that the master has for you. Can we read? Can we read Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to 30? I'll be wrapping up soon. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to 30. Are we together? Matthew 19, 27 to 30. Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will be there for us? Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his throne, on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, or wife, or children, or fields, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. Now, this scripture is very important. You remember the story where a rich young man came to Jesus to ask him, I'm rich, I've obeyed the law. What else must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, you, you've obeyed the law, okay, fine. Then let me test you if I am your Lord, if you will obey me. Go and sell all the things you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. And the guy was sad. He said, no, I know the him say I can He said, okay. He left, which means he could not submit to the Lordship of Christ. And when he left, then Peter began to get confused. Oh, we left our businesses thinking this guy was going to become the king of Judah and then he will appoint us some political appointments so that we will recoup our investments. We have packed our boats and others. Our family bills are piling up. You, you understand? School fees is piling up. We have stopped working for three years, hoping that, you know, uh, he will come into political power and we can recoup the investment. Now, even those who have money, he says they should go and sell and give to the poor, which means this guy is not going to give us money. Let me ask him. So we, what will we get? That was a good question that Peter asked. And then Jesus said, Peter, relax. Relax. At the renewal of all things, when I sit on my throne, I have already given the 12 tribes of Israel to you. And that is very humbling. If we are talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, 
we are talking about Israel that has names like Abraham, Moses, Elijah, powerful names, David the king, and powerful names. Are we together? All these people are part of the house of Israel. So if the Peters and the Johns and these fishermen have been appointed to rule the 12 tribes of Israel, it's a wonderful blessing. Jesus was telling them that what I have for you is so great. So we are going to rule during the millennium. Do you remember the tenets where the one who, got, who was given five came and said, I have had five more. So now there are ten. And then the master said, take charge of ten cities. Ten cities. The other ones too came and said, I have five. He said, oh, take charge of five cities. Which means that our faithfulness today is going to give us access not just to be um, church leaders, but it's going to give us access to be political leaders. He was talking about cities, taking cities. Praise the Lord. So all the gift he has given you, if you use it well, you are going to rule with him during the millennium. So the millennial rule is another place where our rewards are going to be on display. And it's still going to be based on how you fare at the Bema seat. Are we together? Yes. So some of us may work under other people. Maybe now I'm an apostle, but in that realm, uh, I am depending on how I score, I may work under this brother and I may report to him so that he also reports until it gets to headquarters, which will be in Jerusalem. Are we together? So what the Lord is taking us to is a very organized kingdom. Uh -huh. Very realistic, organized kingdom where we are going to work and work under people. So your inability to submit, no creative mass. Those of us who cannot even submit to other people, or those of us who cannot lead other people, you don't know the harm you are doing to yourself. Be responsible when it comes to the things of the kingdom. Because the Lord is watching all these things, and he's going to give you rewards. Kill yourself for the kingdom. For on that day, there will be rewards. The final chunk of rewards which I want to touch is where we started from last week, the new Jerusalem. Now, when we get to the new earth, when the heavens and earth pass away and we get to the new earth, that one too, they are not just going to release us on the earth and say that go and live. No. They are going to appoint us geographical placements and jurisdiction. In other words, all the discipleship that we would have gone through, going to heaven for seven years, ruling with Christ for a thousand years, would have prepared us to take the new earth. Now, when we get to the new earth, there will be people who will be continental presidents. Are we together? And I'm sure that those are going to be fathers of the faith, people who the Lord can trust, and then under them will be a other level of leaders until we get to the home cell. Hello? Yeah. Even in the home cell, there will be a leader and some who will be led. All I'm trying to say is that your faithfulness now, the things you do for the Lord now, will matter at the Bema seat. And who you become at the Bema seat, how they decorate you at the Bema seat, will have a reflection on the kind of duty they give you during the millennium. And after the millennium, when we get to the new earth, the same powers will be transferred there. Which means that, and you think when we get to heaven, I'll now work hard. You will work for no reward in heaven. Are we together? The place where your works can change your status is now. Amen? Am I talking to somebody? So please, this grace period and, and the Lord uh, waiting and waiting and waiting is for us to wake up and realize that the gift of life is for us to work hard for him. Because there are rewards that follow works. Those who would go to heaven must go well. If you will go, then you must go very well. Hallelujah. But make sure that you are not left out when the trumpet sounds. As soon as the trumpet sounds, if you are still around, you are in trouble already. We don't know how the tribulation will look like. We don't know. We don't know. But may the Lord help you and I to be able to follow hard after his will. To be able to do what the master wants now. 
I tell you what, this is the best time to obey the Lord. This is the best time to serve the Lord. This is the best time to remain faithful to Christ. This is the best time to do business for the king. This is the best time to live for him. Because there are rewards that are coming. And those rewards are much, much greater. When the servants who were given the, tenor, uh, the, 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 the talents were called by their master to come and give account. One said, you gave me five and I had five more. What the master said was that, good and faithful servant, you have been faithful in these little things. In other words, in compared to the reward you will get. It's like somebody employs you for one hour to come and clean these drums. And when the one hour is done, and says, well, I'm coming to pay you. What, what will you be expecting after cleaning these drums? What will you be expecting after one hour? Something small. Like? <laughs> what will be fair? Oh, 10 cities. What? 10 cities. 10 cities for one hour. Some say on Pesuka. I Are you talking about 10 pounds or 10 cities? For one hour, let's say they, they give you 10 pounds. Let's say so. No, we are in Ghana. So let's say 50 Ghana yeah, or 60 Ghana. That will be fair, right? What about if the person gives you 100? Hey, this man is kind. Tomorrow to call me. <laughs> is there any other job I will do? What about if he gives you 500 Ghana cities for cleaning the drums? What about if he gives you 2,000 Ghana cities? You will start getting scared. You will think he has an ulterior motive. Or they will call Sakawa. What about if after cleaning the drums, he tells you that great is your reward. I have parked a BMW at the back. Go and take it. What about that one? What about if he tells you that and I have built a seven-bedroom, three-story for you. Go and take it after one hour. Am I telling somebody something? A mansion of gold, of, of onyx, of carbuncle, of topaz is being built. Our means of transport in heaven will be awesome. We are going into a realm without sweat. So all the things that we are doing now, going to win souls, fasting and praying a little, living a holy life, stopping the life of sin, practicing godliness, are seen as just a little work. So the work we are doing looks so small compared to the kind of rewards he's going to give us. That day when they show you your rewards, you even feel guilty. That really, me, this, for what I did, that is how good the master is. But those who fall to the left side of the master, they will be put at a place where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that these words will be serious to us, will mean something to us. We will take the words as the words of the Lord. Go back to the house, sit with the Lord, and take decisions about your life. Go and do some introspection. Go and sit down and look at all the things in your life that are not helping you. And begin to cut some things off. Because anything you lose for him, you will receive. You will receive rewards. And the master would not lie. I came to encourage somebody that Jesus is coming. And when he comes, for our little effort in the kingdom, he has great rewards for us. Let's continue to trust in the Lord. Let's continue to live for him. Let's continue to work for him. For there are rewards that are coming. May the Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we please rise up as I hand over to Pastor Mankwa. We are going to heaven to enjoy. We are going to heaven to enjoy.
hands wherever you are. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Lift it up and give it to him. And give it to him. And give it to Jesus. to prepare you and I for Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands. The man of God said, concerning the rapture, no one knows the hour, no one knows the time that Jesus will rapture the church. And in every ministry, he said, I'm not even a son of man. So as a son of man, as a human being, he never knew. But as God, he knew. Not even angels. He can come today. I want us to lift up our hands and commit our life to the Lord. Lord, help me. Amen your words. This is the opportunity that you and I have. Because the second examination, you can pass. We can't go through the tribulation. It's too difficult. You can endure. There is the opportunity the Lord has given to us for us to live our right. For us to live for him. For us to forgive each other. And live for him. Lift up your hands and commit your life to the Lord. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? We want to thank and bless you, Lord God Almighty, for your words. We want to thank and bless you for ministering unto us concerning your coming. Thank you for your You are coming again. You are coming for the saints, oh Lord. And you will again come with the saints. We pray in Jesus' mighty name that being part of the elect, being part of the redeemed, you will have me to live for you so that you will come for me in the name of Jesus. I commit my life unto you. Oh Lord, do what is right in the name of Jesus. Help me to work at my own salvation with fear and trembling in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I commit my life unto you. Help me, help me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sex. At this time, I don't want you to pray in tongues. Use your mother tongue yes. to pray. For we come cast out whether it is gun or ever or a sake or whatever. Use your mother tongue and talk to the Lord. At the right time, we will pray in tongues for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The man of God said that God is coming for the virgins, and the redeemed are the virgins. But some are wise, others are foolish. The wise are those who are prepared for a long time for the coming of their master. We want to pray that the Lord will help us to be wise virgins. 
the Lord will help us to prepare for a long time. No matter what happens, we will still be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to pray that we will not live our lives anyhow. Anything goes. No, no. But we will consciously, intentionally live for him by the help of the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and lift up your voice and talk to your God. He is coming again. Oh, he is coming again. Oh, he is coming again. Father, I pray once again in the name of Jesus that you help me to be a wise virgin. Have you redeemed me by your blood and have you qualified me as your virgin. Help me not to be a foolish one, but a wise one by living for you, by preparing for a long time for your coming. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Help me, oh Lord, so that daily I will feed on your word and obey your word. In the name of Jesus. Help me, so that daily I will build up myself spiritually and in the things of God. Deeply rooted, well built up in the things of God. In the name of Jesus. Help me, oh Lord, to do something for you. Kingdom living, kingdom business, kingdom rewards. Help me to live for you and have me live for you. Do something for you, Lord God Almighty. With assurance that you, Lord God Almighty, will reward me. Oh Lord, my God, I commit my love unto you. That you help me to be conscious of your coming and live for you all the days of my life and live for you in holiness and in righteousness all the days of my life and to do something for you and to do something for you because everything that we'll do will never go unrewarded you will reward us oh Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus that we are praying again there is no way you and I can go through the tribulation. And that is why in, in, in the gospel, Jesus said, unless the Son of Man cuts short of the days, none of the elects will be saved. He has to cut it short. It is not easy to go through the tribulation. And therefore, you and I must write the exams and pass once and for all. As our father was ministering, I was sharing with Uncle Ben that I had an experience during my six form exams. They referred me one paper. With all that I did, they referred me. And what I went through before I got the paper again, I purpose in my heart that from henceforth, no matter how difficult the exams is, I'll write and pass it once and for all. And from that time, God has given me the degrees. I got it once and for all. We have to get through heaven once and for all. We can't go through the tribulation time. The wicked antichrist, we can't, we, we can't endure. The more you beg him, the heavier your punishment will be. I want to lift up our hands. May the Holy Ghost pour the spirit of holiness and righteousness in our spirit. Yes. Not that holiness is a spirit. Oh, holiness is a spirit. Yes. Can you project Romans chapter 1, verse 3, going? So that we will lift up our hands and begin to pray in tongues. Yes. Pray in tongues yes. for the infilling of the spirit of holiness, the spirit of righteousness, regarding the son who, as to his human nature, was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the son of God. But there is a resurrection from the dead. And so holiness is a spirit. Just so we are baptized by the Holy Ghost and we speak in tongues. Yes. Shall we lift up our hands yes. and pray for the baptism yes. of the spirit of holiness yes. to live for Jesus yes. all the days of our life. Whatever you are, lift up your hand and pray in tongues and pray in tongues. Let me hear you praying in tongues. Do not be drunk with wine. It leads to debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit of God. Rakaba Shadabaya. Rabo Katota. Abo Kalebra Katolaba. Ileba Katanda 
Rabasoti, la bro, la bande, le 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 le. Hamaya kaka la ba 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 ba. Rabota la basa, akala bo se kelebre kato. Ya bonda la basanda rabakando. Kola benda lo basanda ile brakatando zwande libondo makota leba ila brakato. My strength, you can never prevail. It will take the Holy Spirit for you to stand for the Lord. It will take the spirit of holiness to live to please the Lord. Without holiness, no one can please the Lord. Yes! Beloved, bring up yourself in your most holy faith, pray in the Holy Spirit. Edify your, your, your inner man. Build up the inner man as you pray in the Holy Spirit. Be strengthened by the Spirit of God so that you can say no unto ungodliness, no to sin, no to worldly passions, and say yes to Jesus, yes to holiness, yes to righteousness, yes to the things of God. Ayanta, Katondo, Bolondo, Bracatonde, Bolondo, Bracatende, Hey, Salala, la 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 Oh Jesus, Captain of Israel's host and God of all who seek the land above. Of all who seek the land above, even heaven be.
now, after the altar call, with all humility, I will ask him to come and pray for us. That we will stand for the Lord all the days of our lives. Live for him. Come watch me. But today is a gospel Sunday. Oh, it's a gospel Sunday. And the purpose of the gospel Sunday is to, the first strand is to preach the gospel to those who are not saved. And the second strand is to cause you who is redeemed to continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you are here, you have already encountered Jesus. Your sins are not forgiven. Jesus is here to save you. You want to give your love to Jesus. Shall we all bow down our hands, please, for a moment? You are not redeemed. Your name is not written in the book of love. You know in your spirit. Uh, you want to give your love to Jesus. This is the right time. Why don't you lift up your right and wherever you are, you want to give your love to Jesus. He is here to forgive you of your sins. He is here to wash you with his blood and make you whole. Write your name in the book of life and qualify you to be the elect and qualify you to be part of the redeemed. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your right and wherever you are, you want to give your love to Jesus. Yes, Lord, I've seen a hand there. Yes, I've seen other hands there. Whether you are a child or old, salvation is individual. Jesus is here to save you. you. And whatever you are, why don't you lift up your hands and repeat after me, dear Jesus. I know that you are God. And you have the power to forgive. And have the power to save. I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Spirit in my heart and cause me to stand for you and live for you all the days of my life. Thank you for qualifying me to be part of the elect. Thank you for maybe making me your son in your kingdom. From now onwards, to work out my own salvation, having received from you, Jesus, with fear and trembling. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, committed my dearly beloved, who have given their lives unto you. Unless you call them, they wouldn't have come to you. But thank you for calling them. Thank you for saving them. Thank you for writing their names in the book of life. Thank you for forgiving them of all their sins, their past mistakes. If anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. I ask that you pour your spirit in their lives. Cause them to be deeply grounded and rooted and well built up in the face. Find a new Christ Jesus. May nothing take them out of this grace. Thank you for your grace at work in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Shall we lift up our hands as we don't humiliate once again? We invite our apostle to pray for us. To pray for us. Shall I ask those who accepted Jesus in this meeting, who have prayed the sinner's prayer, come forward, come forward. Yes, come, come. You have never accepted the Lord, but today you want to give your life to Christ. Come forward, come forward. You prayed the sinner's prayer, and you are sure the Lord has touched you. Wherever you are, come forward as we have prayed. Yeah, those up there, please come. If you're up there, come. Come down, just come down. This is the best decision to take in life. It's the best thing to do with life. Your names are being written in the book of life. Come forward, come forward. Let us all be witnesses of this great day. Come, come to the Lord. Come. And all of us want to come before the Lord as individuals. Lift up your hands at this time. I don't know if you know this song, Just As I Am Without One Plea. If the singers can help us. As we wait for all those who have accepted the Lord to come forward. You want to give your life to Jesus, there's still opportunity for you. Just as I am without plea. Just as I am without one plea. But that 
ourselves before you today remembering your great love and your passion to save us that passion that took you to the cross of Calvary that passion that made you release the Holy Ghost yes. to come and live among us and to help us to make it to heaven we thank you for those who have accepted this invitation today Jesus. and whose names are being written in the book of life today father we are witnesses and on that last day as the role is being called let their names be mentioned yes Lord. among the saints who walk into the corridors of glory we pray for our brother and all others yes. the lord give them strength to be able to stand to the end we pray that we shall fight their battles for them and open doors ahead of them that they will be able to progress in the faith till the end. Now for each and every one of us, we are accountable for the words that we have heard. And so Lord, we come to you to ask for mercy. Yes, Lord. For by flesh shall no man prevail. We admit that we are human. We are frail and we are weak. You are working in us, but we are in the midst of the already but not yet. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we are buffeted many times mm -hmm. by trials and temptations and tribulations. And we walk on slippery paths and sometimes we slip. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we want to come before you today. We ask you, that your mercy shall triumph over judgment. Oh, us, we pray, O oh God, that for each one of us, yeah, we know that you want to save us. Yeah. You want us to be counted among the wise virgins. Yeah, yeah. And so, Lord, whatever it takes yeah. for you to snatch us, O oh God, from the hands of deception, Jesus. Father, we yield unto you. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you shall save each one the grace we need Mm. to be able to stand to the end. Yes, you know the days that are ahead of us. Mm. As we ask you to cleanse us and to fill us with the spirit of holiness. Yes. We pray, O oh God, that you shall grant us, O oh God, wisdom. wisdom. Great passion for holiness. Oh, grant us a heart, O oh God, oh, that yearns for you more than anything. And help us, O oh God, to cherish the things that you are preparing for us. Above all, we pray that Lord, let the fear of you return into our hearts. Oh, let the fear of you return into our hearts, yes, Lord. Lord. Let the fear of you return into our hearts, oh, Lord. So let us be people who fear you and who live for you, who honor you mm. and who revere you. Help us, O oh God, that we shall not take lightly the things of the spirit. But help us, O oh God, to be disciplined and diligent. Yes, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to return to our first love. And help us to excel the first works. Yes, Lord. Bring us, O oh God, back mm. to our highest law. And let us give our utmost for your highest. We know that you will be with us. Yes, Lord. And you will never leave us. Yes, Continue Lord. to strengthen us oh, and help us, O oh God. Lord. 
to be heroes of the faith. Mm. We thank you and we give you praise. Help us, oh God, to be heroes in this fight. We thank you and we give you praise. Hallelujah. Every step we have to take as we close from here so that we will be where you want us to be. Help us to take those steps that we shall be yours, that we shall walk around with your name on us, that you will write our names, O oh God, in the temple of your God. And help us, O oh God, to represent you well in this world. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Our dear brother, and as many as did give their lives to Jesus, and all those who have visited us for the first time after close of service, we will be meeting you at the reception area and share a few words with you. And shall we all say amen?